Okay, on this one we're going to do a state space problem, and we're going to do a really simple one. And we're only going to have one mass. We got one spring here. Here's our spring constant, so uh, 4 times 10 to the 5th newtons per meter. And then we have one damper, 200 newton seconds per meter is our damping coefficient. And then we're going to have a force that's applied here going to the right. Now let's let our force, f of t, equal a sinusoid. So let's say it's 100 um, times sine of 200 times t, like that. Okay, and that's going to be in newtons there. So we want to write the state space representation. So let's see how to do that. All right, and remember we have a basic equation for state space. So it's x dot equals ax plus b times u. All right, some books might call this u term something different, but, but I usually call it u. The bars here just indicate we have a vector matrix. Um, so we got that, and then we have an output equation, which is going to be y equals c times x. Those are both vectors or matrices also. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's figure out how to get it in this state space representation. First thing we have to do is draw the free body diagram, all right, because I have to get my equations of motion first. So let's go ahead and do the free body diagram of this mass. So that's going to be step one, so free body diagram. And here's our block, 10 kilograms is the weight, and then let's put our forces on here. So first of all, I've got this applied force F of T that is going this direction, and I know what that equation is, all right? So 100 sine 200 T, let's go into the right. Now, if that's pushing to the right, which way would our spring force go? Well, it's trying to stretch the spring out, right? The springs don't like to be stretched out. They wanna go back to their natural length. So that spring is gonna pull back to the left. And our spring force will be that constant K, right? So that is our spring constant K. And then we're gonna multiply that by X, right? So that's the amount of um, stretch or compression you have. And then we've got our damping force here that's gonna come about. We're pushing it to the right. Dampers, they work in opposition to motion, right? It's trying to slow it down. So if I'm pushing it to the right, the damper is trying to slow it down. So that's gonna basically be a force to the left. And the force for a damper is going to be that coefficient times x dot. Okay, so essentially if x is uh, displacement, x dot would be the speed. Alright, so that's our free body diagram. Now let's go ahead and write out our equation of motion. So our equation of motion is just going to basically be the sum of the forces in the x direction equals max. Alright. Newton's second law, that's all it is. Let's say to the right is positive because that's the direction we're, we're trying to go in. That gives us a negative 4 times 10 to the fifth x minus 200 x dot, right? Because those are both going to the left. And then this one's going to the right. So we're going to have plus 100 sine 200 t. That's the end of the forces. So now let's go to the right side. We had our mass, which is 10 kilograms. And then AX, well, that one, we're going to write it in this same notation here. Notice I have X, X dot. So if X is our displacement, we're going to the right, then acceleration would be the second derivative of that. So we'll have X double dot for our acceleration in the X direction. Okay, so now we've got that, and we can go through, let's get the x double dot by itself, so let's divide everything by 10, and then that's going to give us negative 4 times 10 to the 4th x minus 20 x dot plus 10 sine 200 t, and then that'll equal x double dot. Alright, so this is our equation of motion. So we've got that. And now we want to basically put this in a matrix form or state space representation. Okay, now what we want to do is we're going to create what's called state variables. And these are going to represent position of velocity for our mass. 
Now for every mass we have, we want a variable for position and a variable for velocity. So in this case, we have one mass, so I need one variable for position, one for velocity. Okay, so I'm just gonna call it x1, so that's my state variable one, and I'm gonna set that equal to the displacement x. Okay. Now I need one for velocity. So let's call that x2, and I want it to be representing velocity, so I'm gonna call that x dot. Okay. So let's make a little note here. So we need a variable for position and velocity for each mass. So if you had a problem with two masses, for instance, you're gonna have two variables for position, two variables for velocity, one for each mass. All right, and that's something that um, sometimes students forget. Now we've got our state variables defined. Now I'm trying to get it in this form here. All right, so basically what I'm doing, I'm taking this second order differential equation right here, and I'm gonna reduce it down to a first order equation. Notice this is x dot, whereas this is x double dot. So we're reducing it down by using these state variables. So I want an x dot equation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the derivative with respect to time of these state variables. Okay, so now I want x1 dot. Well, x1 was equal to x, so if I do x1 dot, then this would have to equal x dot. Now notice x dot was x2, right? So I can say that's x2. And then do the same thing here. Derivative of x2 is x2 dot, which is then gonna be x double dot which is the acceleration. Notice we've got that right here. So that means this is going to equal this expression here. All right, so let's write out that expression. Okay, so we've got that. Now what we want to do is notice I've got just the regular x and x dot here. What I want to do is represent these with my state variables. Right, the x1 and x2. So this is x. So that, if we look here, is going to be x1. This is x dot, which is here. So that's got to be x2. Now let's rewrite that in terms of those state variables. So we have negative 4 times 10 to the fourth x1 minus 20 x2 plus 10 sine 200 t. Okay, so now I've got both of these equations in terms of my system variables, right? This one was for position, this was for velocity. Now we can go ahead and put it in this form here, okay? So on the left side, it's just the x dot terms. So that's basically gonna be this right here. So let's put x1 dot, x2 dot. That's the left side. Now let's create a little matrix A. I'm going to leave it blank for now. We'll fill it in in just a second. This X that you see here, this is just a vector, a column vector of your state variables. So these are my state variables. So I'm going to have X1, X2. Notice this right here is just the derivative of the state variables, right? It was X dot. And then we're going to have a matrix um, for B. Let's just, all right, next thing is U, right? So U is going to be for inputs. So our input to the system was this force, the 100 sine 200 T. Okay, and we'll add that in in just a second after we fill out this other stuff. Okay, so let's look at this matrix A. What we're gonna do is we're gonna be using these equations right here. All right, and basically pulling off the coefficients. So I know X1 dot, which is this one here, is top row, is going to equal X2. So I wanna create a matrix uh, A here where when I multiply this A matrix times this column vector, I get the same thing I have on the right side. So I'm gonna have zero and a one here because when I multiply these together, I get zero times X1 plus one times X2, which gives me X2, which is what we have here. All right, I don't have anything else up there, so I'm gonna put a zero here and now 
let's go um, to the next row. All right, we're still at this input we need. We're gonna do that in just a second. So for the A matrix, let's look at the second row. So our second row deals with x2 dot, right? So we look at this expression here. I wanna pull out the coefficients where we get this exact same thing when I do this multiplication. So I'm gonna have negative four times 10 to the fourth right there because that will multiply by x1 just like I have in this term. And then next we'll have negative 20 because that'll give me the negative 20 x2. All right, so we pulled out those coefficients. Now on this one, notice I have this 10 sine 200 t, right? So this was basically my input, okay? So I could have a one here and then let's put our input over here to the right. Okay, so now we've written this um, in state space form, and now we want to get our output. Okay, so let's say our output, we want to know um, displacement. Okay, now what system variable represents displacement? Well, that would be up here, right? The position one. So we need x1. That's what we would want out. So when you're forming your um, C matrix here, you're going to choose that to get the output you want. Okay, so we got C, and then we've got our state variable vector here, so x1, x2. If I just want position or displacement, I want to get x1 out. So my C matrix then would be 1 and 0 because when I multiply these, I'm gonna get one times x1 plus zero times x2. That gives me x1. Okay. If I wanted displacement and velocity, what do you think we'd get? Let's see. So in this case, I need x1 for displacement. x2 is the variable for velocity, right? So for my C matrix, let's see what we need. Okay, so we got C times the state vector, which is made up of the system variables. Now I want displacement, so that's gonna be one and zero. And then I want velocity. So we're gonna have a second row here, and this would be zero and one. Okay, now a lot of people wanna put C as being one, one, and that would not be right, and let's look at why that is. If I did this, I would have x1 plus x2, right? That doesn't make any sense. You can't add position and velocity. So we don't want this. This is not what we want. We want a separate row for each of those outputs that we want, okay? And that's how you would go about creating your C matrix. Okay, so the key here is on these problems, for each mass, you want one variable for position, one variable for velocity, okay? And then you're gonna use those to rewrite your equation motion in terms of the system variables, right? So that's what we did here. Um, go through, put them in matrix form. Remember the U over here is your input. And then um, you do your output equation. So the output equation is based on the user, not the system itself. Okay, user picks this. Okay, because normally if you were to do this, you'd be putting this in a code like MATLAB or something. So you would be able to tell MATLAB using this uh, matrix here what output you want to see. And then you could do plots of the displacement or the velocity, things like that. All right, and if you want more um, examples of that, I have the controls class on my website, it has several examples of how you go through MATLAB and um, plot everything and solve these equations. Okay, hopefully that was helpful. It's just a short example, um, but hopefully you liked it and I will see you all next time.